welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today I am exploring Musashi Koyama, and I'm in a covered shopping arcade, which is called the Musashi Koyama Shotengai Palm. And this is a really special place because it is an 800 meter long covered shopping arcade, which makes it the longest covered shopping arcade in all of Tokyo. In 1944, Musashi Koyama was actually very much damaged due to bombings during World War II. So in 1947, the Musashi Koyama uh, Cooperation came together and decided to revive the area. So now this is the glory of Musashi Koyama today. And it boasts over 200 shops and restaurants with all kinds of different items like electronic appliances, um, I see bicycles, food, stationery, a little bit of everything, also clothing. So it's a very fun place to shop and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of delicious food they have here today. Let's go check it out. Alrighty, so our first stop for today is Komine Bakery. It's known for their anpan, which are breads that are filled with sweet red bean paste. This is a nice fusion of Japanese and Western culture. Anpan has been around in Japan for a very long time. start with the uguisu mame bread. You can see on the inside it's got lovely green paste on the inside. Let's see if it tastes like like red bean a little bit. Itadakimasu. Mmm. It does taste a lot like a red bean paste dessert. It's very sweet on the inside. It, it tastes like zunda, which in Japanese is um, it's like an edamame paste. And of course the bread itself is super, super fluffy and light, kind of like a brioche. It's delicious. Next up we have the amashoku. It looks kind of like two muffin tops sandwiched together. Let's give that a try, okay? It's like two muffin tops or two pancakes. Here we go. There doesn't appear to be anything inside. It is, it's just two pieces of pastry. And as he mentioned, it's very, it's a little bit dry. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like a, but it does feel reminiscent of like the kampang, which is like a preserved food. And I think that maybe this is popular in Japan because it feels nostalgic. Very simple, um, not too sweet. Um, very plain, but it just has that, that nice, light sweetness to it. Anyway, let's move on to our next location. Let's go. This is a little yakitori shop just off of the main covered street that we were just in. And they have a variety of different yakitori um, or chicken skewers available. Um, and they're not only yakitori, I think. They have a few different kinds of meats as well. And they have a little bit more volume than your traditional yakitori skewers. So I'm excited to try them. Alrighty, I have got my skewers. On the right, I have the uh, unagi eel. But this looks like negi, which is green onions. Um, but this is also going to be very good. Let's give this a try. I'm going to start with the unagi eel. Yum! Let's give it a try. Mmm, the sauce is amazing. There's a very strong soy sauce flavor to it, which I believe is what they dip it in, but they're also probably cooking it, grilling it in another unagi sauce. The unagi itself is very, very soft. So good. But <laughs> instead of eating all of that, I'm going to move on to the next one. This is the meat and green onion skewer. Let's give it a try. Mmm, that is so juicy. The onion itself is really juicy as well, but it's got a nice crunch to it. And the chicken is also really juicy. Um, it's a great yakitori. Goes very well with the sauce, which is also, I believe, a soy sauce based sauce, not just soy sauce. Juicy yakitori. Next, I have something very special that I wanted to try. It's right here. If you take a look at the sign, you can see a parfait 
And if you may notice, it's not just the photo, it's a larger than average parfait. It's called the King Parfait. And actually, it's not your everyday parfait. It is a 3.5 kilogram, 60 centimeter tall parfait. So I'd love to challenge this. It's called Osama to Ichigo, which means the king and strawberry, which I think is a very cute name and it looks very rustic. I love the design. Let's go check it out. Wow, this is a very interesting old restaurant and lots of autographs. I imagine that these are a lot of famous people who visited the shop, left their autographs. Wow, even more autographs here. The big parfait. Ah, konnichiwa. Eto kyo koko hajimete kuren desu ke domo, sono okki parfait ga sugoku kininatte ite, ano 3.5 kilo desu yo ne. Kochira te doushite ano tsukuritai to omotta n deshou ka? Ano tsukuritai to omotta no wa ano koi shoujin ga nai te iu koto to sore to ano みんなでいろんな人たちが仲良く笑いながら食べてほしいその商品としてあのソフトクリームとかアイスクリームであるものがないからそれで作りました約35年前にえー、じゃあ結構もう昔からあの有名人も来てあこちらはあのテレビとか雑誌に取材された時だけのサインです。あ、それも結構多いっていうことですね。そうですね。大体だけど、うん、三百回弱テレビやあのあれに出てます。その一つ一つの思い出で貼ってるだけ。<笑>ありがとうございました。So I'm inside the shop now, and I'm just so amazed by the decor. It feels like I've kind of slipped through time a little bit. So I'm very excited to be here today, and as you know, I'm going to be ordering the giant king-size parfait. You can choose a variety of sauces, such as chocolate, strawberry, kiwi, lemon, blueberry, and I believe raspberry. So there's a lot of different flavor choices. Today, I think I'm going to go with chocolate because I love chocolate. It looks very rustic as well. The spoon is gorgeous and clearly we can see that the parfait is going to be enormous by the size of this spoon which probably isn't going to fit in my mouth. So I'm excited. Oh my gosh you guys, look at this giant parfait. <laughs> This is my face in comparison to the parfait. <laughs> but technically this is meant to be shared with like four to six other people. Um, so we'll probably be sp splitting it with the other team members after this. I guess now it's time to dig in. We've got uh, chocolate sauce, it seems, and we've got also cornflakes, which are a very common fixture in Japanese parfaits. And we've got poki, which are a very popular Japanese Snack. Okay guys, it's already starting to melt, so I'm gonna dig in. First I'm gonna go from the top to prevent spillage. Just get to the kimas. Mmm. First reaction is it's very cold. Secondly, it's a delicious vanilla soft serve ice cream. But now let's dig into the chocolatey bits here. Get some chocolate and cornflakes. Ooh, it's melty. Here we go. Mmm. I love the cornflakes on the parfait because it gives like a, um, a different texture. It's not all creamy and like soft. Um, you get a little bit of this crunch to it and the chocolate sauce is also delicious. Okay, the top part is getting a little dangerous. I'm gonna just take the, the whole top bit off. Guys, this is a giant parfait and I have to eat it fast because it's melting. Mmm. Okay, so I'm still working on this parfait, but as you can see, um, with a little bit of help, we've eaten about a good half of it. So we're doing okay, um, but I'm gonna keep answering questions. What's the secret to staying in shape and fit as a food vlogger? I might have like a good metabolism. I do a lot of walking and, and uh, I live on a mountain, um, so I usually ride a bike uphill very far every day. What's your favorite part about living in Japan? And what do you miss most about Canada? Um, Japan is super convenient. 
um, you can take a train pretty much anywhere in Japan with the exception of like way out in the countryside. Um, also the food is amazing and there are new shops opening like very regularly so it never gets boring. What I miss about Canada is sometimes I miss just like the, the carefreeness. Um, in Canada like strangers will just talk to each other on the street and they're very friendly. In Japan people are a little more reserved um, but still kind. So there's a little bit of this difference. The challenge is to keep eating while I answer questions. Mmm, that is so cold. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a gross amount of anything? Yes. <laughs> Someone says, you're too fine. How is the training? They are probably talking about my training for Miss World Japan. Training is going well. There's a lot of different categories of judgment, which I need to be able to excel in, including fitness, modeling, like social media. You need to make a presentation about a social issue. There's an English debate. There's a lot of stuff. So it's going okay, but it's, it's challenging. Okay, real question. What's your favorite Japanese American sushi roll? California rolls are great, but also I recall like a spicy tuna. I think there's also like a Philadelphia cheese and salmon. While I like those ones, um, nowadays I prefer the Japanese sushi. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, this is actually all the time we have for questions, but thank you for to everyone who sent me a question. If you guys would like to ask me more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. just told me something very interesting about Musashi Koyama. Um, I asked him if Musashi Koyama has changed a lot over the last 30, 35 years and he said um, it didn't just change a lot, it changed like drastically. Um, and he says that the main difference is that back in the day, 35 years ago, most of these were like family run smaller shops along this whole strip. But over the years, they've kept developing and developing and now we have a lot more like, you know, very commercial, um, you know, chain stores and things like that. And also the main fact, the biggest factor is just that there haven't been people to take over the family business. So a lot of the businesses that were once here are almost all gone. So he says that, you know, most of the traditional shops are gone. Now it's become very commercial. And um, nowadays there's also a lot of people who are, um, instead of running their own family business, putting more money into, for example, renting out spaces or like apartment buildings. Um, so it's not as much of a, um, like a more traditional, uh, shopping street anymore. So he does feel a huge difference and one thing that he really wanted to share with all of us actually is that 35 years ago when the shop opened they used to have a, a cake and coffee set. They still do. They were serving it for 500 yen, both cake and coffee together, which is about five dollars. Um, back in the day that was considered to be a little bit of a high-end price. So people thought of this shop is rather high-end but what he's done is he's actually kept the same price for 35 years so even today you can get that same cake and coffee set for just 500 yen five dollars that's actually a very good deal nowadays and most people who come in would think oh this that's really cheap like this must be like a you know like just like a cheap family business but he says no that's not actually what it is it's more um, his policy and like personal values where he doesn't want to change the price like it it's you know the exchange rates and things have changed um, he could raise the price very easily but out of policy he's decided to keep that same price which I think is really amazing so you can still come and enjoy a cake and a coffee for the same price as you did 35 years ago and in the same way he hasn't changed the giant parfait. It's, I guess it's exactly the same as it was 35 years ago. And he just wants to keep um, a little bit of that, the past still, and keep it alive even today amidst this changing Musashi Koyama, which I think is um, really, really amazing. And he seems to be very passionate about that. So even in the years to come, he hopes that people can still come here and enjoy that giant parfait. Um, and it'll still be the same as it used to be for people who came a long time ago. And even in the future, families can come and eat it together. Friends can come and eat it together. In the coronavirus pandemic, this is becoming increasingly difficult. He doesn't know 
how exactly that's gonna continue on, but for him this is, um, that's what the whole purpose of this shop is really about. It's bringing people together. So I think this is beautiful and I loved talking to him and I'm really glad that I came here today. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.